Thanks for staying with us. Right, so let's start with the nation. Kano um, and Lagos top registration. Bullets from terrorist guns still in my stomach. Strike, federal government withholding our salaries since February, says Asu. Buhari assures states facing terror attacks of support. Flood hit 233 council areas in 32 states, says Nema. 21 died in Lagos road accident. Two barons, chemists held in raid on Umpuru Umbiri labs. Um, gunmen killed seven guards. Okay. Which story are we starting with? The bullet story. Very gruesome account of how one of the five freed hostages from the Kaduna, uh, Abuja Kaduna train um, attack. His name is Mukhtar Shaibu. He recounted how he was shot after noon prayers um, in the uh, kidnappers' den. While he sat, he just felt a bullet pass through him. One of the uh, bandits or the terrorists was sort of playing with a gun or something and shot straight at him. And he said he saw blood streaming down his body. He, he, he was in pain. And they called their doctor. The doctor came, just put finger inside the wound, trying to find bullet. And he couldn't find it. And then he put a scissors. And all this time, he was crying in pains, you know, inserting those objects. And he said he kept crying in pains like that. And they didn't do anything. So he was freed with the bullet still in him now and he's just hoping for a good, great medical process to help at least remove it or determine what level of damage is there so this only um, can only um, explain some of the things that they are going through he used this opportunity also to ask the government to please facilitate the release of all those pe people being held right now there amongst the, those released were um others um a professor from the university of sorry i can't find the name quickly but this Story. Others were released, really. Okay, so <clears throat> major headline. Uh, Minec has reviewed um, uh, Lagos and Kano are top registration. So according to INEC, um, their goal is to um, clean up the register, detect and eliminate double registration. So that's what they're trying to detect right now. And then ensure that um, those who double, double registered, um, they are second uh, registration will be voided, but they can confirm categorically that we have no fewer than 93 million eligible voters are now registered. Now, of that, we have uh, the Northwest has over 22.6 over million registered voters, and Southwest has about um, over 18 million registered voters. Interestingly, Lagos tops the chart. They woke up in Lagos. Mm -hmm. 7.1 million prospective voters trailed by Kano. 6 million votes. Wow. This, is this not the first time that Lagos I, I, I'm, 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 I'm almost saying it's the first time, but I'm not yeah. sure. Usually I, that, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. But usually Kano comes up with yeah, this 4 million yeah. voters. Yeah. So it's not for this 7 million to, to step show up mm -hmm. and, and vote. On that so 7 day million of you be. have registered. Now, and that issue is picking up the PVCs. There's always yeah. an issue with that. Yeah. So, um... But the lower state, AKT, has over just a little over a million. Bayelsa, Yobe, Gombe. These are some of the states that have very um, turnout. FCT had little turnout, 1.5. That was oh, that's surprising. Very busy. Well, I mean, but, you know, so the good news is that we now have 93 million over, I think it's almost even 94 million. Wow. I think it's almost, let me see the exact that's figure. That's good. Wow. That's, Imagine that's a good if number. everybody had an opportunity so to register. We have registered now. We're waiting for the INEC to do the compilation, mm -hmm. give us our PVCs on yeah. time, yes. and then on that day, show up. Good thing is we have enough time. Please, INEC, I want to advise once again. Can you let us, some, you have our house addresses. You can, we, you can ship it, we'll pay. No, they don't. No, they can't. Because there are 20 people living in some houses. So just send I mean, a message. We'll pick it up. It's not a big I deal. I bet we don't have addresses. They yes. don't want to pick it up where you can register. Choose. Give us the option. No. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you can pick it up. Give us the option, we pay. And make it for seamless. Those that want to. Yeah, yeah, make it seamless. Please, I want to take the story of flooding. So, to the... Um, the the Nama boss, ne Nema boss, let me know, called Director General of National Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Mustafa Hamed, has um, given a report to the news agency of Nigeria NANS that there will be three, 233 local governments are going to experience major flooding, major flooding in 2022 
out of the 32 states of the country. He didn't give a list of them, of those particular local governments. He said that, but the agency had already sent advisory information to all of them up front. It would be nice if the general public knew about these areas. There are several roads that have driven through in the past few days that erosion has taken the road. If there is any flooding, that road is gone. Mm. These people will be um, totally um, cut out of um, the general society. So this isn't just an announcement for media, but the um, ministries for works for every state need to get to work before the flooding happens. <coughs> yes, so the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, yesterday said it dismantled two clandestine laboratories where mm. an illicit mm. drug, crystal methamphetamine, that's meth, a.k.a. Murumiri, were being produced in Lagos and Anambra State. And in that lab, they recovered 258.7 kg of the drug mm. from the lab. This uh, had, um, that's according to the statement by the spokesman, Femi Baba Femi. He said that the suspected drug barons and a chemist were arrested during the raid on July 30. And I want to get the one that happened in Victoria Garden City. He said um, it's owned by a baron, Chris Emeka Nzewi. The second is owned by um, Nise Community of Oka South Local Government Area of Anambra State. That one is owned by Paul Ozuemena. Now, this one that was uh, caught in the area of uh, VGC said it had, was being done in a four-bedroom apartment. And the waste from that, uh, uh, those chemicals were being channeled into the septic tank and the soccer way. And they have a, a very little, I think about a three-month-old or four-month-old baby in that apartment, meaning that the man is not even concerned about the he health even know. Yes, hazard of that. And so one of the reasons they started doing this raid, especially for meth, was since 2021, where a lot of uh, uh, parents were complaining what this drug is doing to young people who are taking it. And so NDLA is out to get these people arrested. And this is more like a warning to everyone who is uh, responsible for you know, cooking up yeah. these drugs. They had a, pharma, a, a chemist amongst them, so they manufacture and the chemist to be cooking, and they are selling, making money, and we, we the people. We the people. This is, you can't say government, though. This is we the people, though. Let's move on to the punch. NRC suspends Lagos Kano Ajaokota train services. Ondo Hospital rations feel patient dies during surgery. Osho APC members protest, demand Chairman Sakin, 21 killed in Lagos Cross River crashes, FRSC blames fog. UK licenses 266 Nigerian doctors in two months. Wow. Impeachment, Trinka backs lawmakers against Buhari. Kerosene hit 800 naira to the litre, Nigerians <laughs> face hard times. Tinubu's government will be fair to all, says Shetima. Bank borrowing from CBN rises 27% to 4.5 trillion naira. Okay, which story are we starting with? The Undo story, quickly. So this is a rather human interest story, and it's a case of we the people, really. So this middle-aged man, Sunday Samuel, took his wife to the Undo State Trauma and Surgical Center in Undo State, and he has accused them of negligence. He said that his wife was diagnosed of breast cancer. They admitted her for a month for, to place her on medication to prepare for surgery. They scheduled her for Monday, the, July the 25th, for the surgery. He, prior to that, he had bought oxygen twice, which she didn't use for some days, and then he said she would need it sometime. He had to buy that. Everything that they needed, he bought. But on the day of the surgery, Nepa take light. They just ah. pour gin. Pour foil for gin. And, you know, once Nepa bring light, they go off the gin. Oh. So in between, while surgery was going, ah. that was happening. Oh. He said at some point, he had to go pull the gin himself because the person that was operating it walked away. They After walked. they brought light, they took it again. He had to put the gin on himself. And eventually, he lost his wife. Oh, and they, my God. Yes, on the surgery table. And then he, you know, he's accused the hospital of negligence. He's pained, he's traumatized. And the admin person is saying, eh, what we do here is that we do surgeries on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and uh, Fridays and Thursdays. He says, nobody does surgeries on Monday. But I understand that maybe they scheduled him for that on Monday. I, I'm, a, I'm an admin person. I really cannot look into this case very well. I will let yeah. you know how it goes. This is an entire case of we the people. This is a person who says, I will use public system, and I don't mind paying. But Nigerians play tente with somebody's life. So that no, when you come out... This is a government this, issue. That should be a legacy. This is not going to be... I hope that the, the government, government is expensive. Was going to this one is expensive. Yeah, but he was willing to buy it. The last of his wife... This is a public hospital. This is a government hospital. The government should have provided a government hospital. He paid for it. He bought oxygen. He said, in between surgery, the doctor now comes out. Hey, oxygen, oxygen. 
they, from, know, they do that. They after he has plan. paid. You know? mm. <sighs> Let's go on a break. That's such a painful story. This one is government. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. You yeah, know, we're in the nation. Oh, please. <laughs> Lamenting the price of uh, PMS. Uh, uh, the price of kerosene has increased to 800 naira per litre from 700 naira last week. Now, according to market survey by The Punch, uh, they showed that one litre of cooking kerosene sold for 700 last week. Mm. It now sells for 800 and 850 in urban parts of Lagos, while the price has hit a high as 1,000, as high as 1,000 per litre in other areas mm -hmm. and they were comparing what uh, they buy in ghana right now they say for ghana it's about 585 naira when you convert uh, their cities and because the market the kerosene market is deregulated it means that the product will be determined the product prices will be determined by market forces and that means that as the dollar is going high the price of kerosene is going high also if dollar comes low likely the price of kerosene may come low so they're just appealing to families to Find a way around it and right. just be hopeful. I was going to take the major headline. So Nigeria Railway Corporation has suspended the Lagos Kano and Ajaukuta train services due to fear of terror attacks. If you recall, on Monday, the, there was a report that um, passengers have to be dropped at the Ajaukuta um, station along that Wari Takwe route. Um, gunmen came, started shooting at the at the passengers who were trying to get into their cars to leave. So that immediately they shut down that place. And down they're also saying that the, um, the Lagos um, canoe route has also been stopped and suspended because they passed through the um, Kaduna states and um, Niger states. And those places have been increased terror, has been increased, has been reported in those areas. So to keep Nigerians safe, they're saying that they're suspending the routes, those routes for now until they have better reports concerning um, the gunmen and um, the terror attacks. And that's pretty much what that story so was saying. So Punch also reports that 266 um, Nigerian doctors were registered in two months in the UK. That's mm. UK alone. We're not analyzing other mm. countries of the world. Mm -hmm. And the total number of tra Nigerian trained doctors, not Nigerian by birth or Nigerian mm. origin, but mm. trained, trained here. they finished their medical school in Nigeria stands at 9,976. Um, we are now third to India and Pakistan in terms of um, foreign doctors working in the UK. What is the cost? We already have a um, medical um, doctor shortage in Nigeria before the exit of doctors out, and now it is getting worse. The advice is um, from the um, Nigerian National of Residence Doctors Chairman, um, Secretary to the Nigerian National of Residence Registered doctors, or resident doctors rather, Dr. Alfa Yusuf. He said the government should declare a state of emergency for the, for the healthcare sector, address the challenges, improve remuneration and good working condition, address security issues. Because the main issues doctors have, why they are relocating, why everybody is relocating is poor working facility, insecurity, including assault on doctors while working, burnout from overwork, among others. We remember that there is, the, the government did a gesture that we celebrated, that they will start paying hazard um, allowance. Hazard allowance. They have not we started. celebrated it since 2020. It hasn't been paid. Mm -mm. So, and we have doctors going at in, ma in massive numbers. And we cannot stop them. You cannot hold me back from going if I want to go. But we must provide conditions here for those that are still staying to be comfortable. I think we should go. I, I, I don't mind our doctors leaving because they get more exposures and more info, um, have more up-to-date learnings. But I think what we need to do is make a conducive environment for them to come back. That's those who have been there for 20 years, 20, mm -hmm. they don't want to come back home. So those make it attractive to come home so that they can set up because that's what we really need. We, have, we need that um, relationship with the Nigerians and diaspora. Okay, any other story? Let's move on now to... Um, Sun? Daily Sun, let me find it. Don't have, we don't have physical papers today, so it's kind of... Um, complicated. It's not, it's, it's, not, it's not funny at all. <laughs> okay, Buhari gives military full powers, mm -hmm. seeks... Uh, foreign help, strike, no justification, keep students at home for five months, says SGF. Amotekun arrests 45 suspected criminals in Ondo. FG to rake in over 165 billion naira from the 5% telecom services and tax. Terrorists free five more kidnapped train passengers. Nap tip, Turkish rights group raised the alarm over trafficking of Nigerians to northern Cyprus. Youth protest in Abia call for disbandment in of Ibubiagu. 
Government kills seven security guards insured two in Uimo State. Okay, which story are we starting well, with? Let's take um, So the Director General of um, the National Emergency Management Agency, Mr. Mustafa, says they, they've identified 233 local government areas in the 32 states and the FCT that have been predicted to be experiencing flooding in this year's mm. um, rain. It's also advised that the listed affect, um, local okay, governments... We took it already. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Okay, so the Umwa from Orogwe community in Oweri West local government area of Imo State have been thrown into deep mourning after government reportedly invaded the area. They killed seven local security guards on duty and left two residents seriously wounded. Now, a source from the community said the government came in two vehicles and a motorbike about 9.30 p.m. They took the guards unaware, uh, shot them in two separate locations. The four of them were shot uh, at a, a building not too far from the hospital, and the other three were shot at a new building in the area called uh, Copper Lodge. They also said that um, uh, two other people were running away from you know, the gunshots when one was macheted and the other one was shot in the leg who has been taken to uh, the Federal Medical Center um, in Oweri. So there's been heavy panic in the community. People are leaving their homes temporarily just to find somewhere to hide their heads. And the police has confirmed the story, but they said they are not aware if the people shot are vigilantes, but they are going to be investigating, and luckily they will find the perpetrators of this act. Okay, which story? Um, um, story. Can I take go ahead, the go ahead. telecom story now? The federal government has projected... 165 billion in one year from its proposed 5% excise duty on telecom services for calls, data, and SMS, and um, other areas as well, in the effort to generate revenue, of course. And the Minister for, for Communications, Issa Pantami, in another report, in another paper, is objecting to this 5% um, tax that they are proposing. Okay, I was going to take. Um, the SGF was commending, saying that we have uh, no justification to keep children out of school for five months concerning ASU. But that was all he said. He didn't say anything else that was really substantial. He just said, we believe that in the soonest, our words will go back to school because we don't want to produce half day graduates. And then he went on to talk about insecurity, saying that insecurity is not just about the government, that the people also must participate and ensure um, to be, secure their communities by providing information and intelligence to security operatives. I thought he was going to focus a bit on Astro, but he, that, that wasn't the story. Any other mm -hmm. story, let's move on to the Nigerian Tribune. I think I can find it. End this madness, Buhari orders security forces. Wow. High cost of diesel affecting my businesses of Basanjo. 16 died in a Kweja road accident. No lecturer has been paid since February, says Asu. Can't should stop acting like appendage of PDP, says ex-APC National Vice Chairman. NDLA boss the Impuru Mumiri Labs in Lagos. <laughs> and Ambra arrested. <laughs> okay, I said like you're about right. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Train attack. Government released five additional hostages. Velo shots, brothels, bans wearing of face masks in Kogi. I'm attacking intercepts 140 travelers in Ibadan. Okay, which story? People seem to have a lot of stories today. I'm yes, sorry. I'm a but, tycoon. Okay. Yes, said about 140 travelers from Zamfara uh, were headed to Ogere, Ogun State, were loaded in a truck, and the truck was intercepted at Bodija area of Ibadan by men of um, Amoteko Corp. And um, they said that they had noticed, the residents in the area had noticed that uh, a truck had a lot of people, and by the time they caught the truck, they found that they had bags of onions, beans, potato, motorcycles, and northern travelers uh, comprising of men, women, and children were hidden and stuffed in between this produce that they were carrying. So the truck was taken to uh, a motorcycle compound and they were interrogated. I think they had to invite uh, some members of the DSS to help in the interrogation and they found that uh, they were just traveling and the driver said, ah, they didn't have money to pay. I was just trying to help them. So they didn't mm -hmm. find any incriminating um, ammunition with them. So they had to escort them to the place that they were headed at the border to Ogere. And um, it was more like a warning that uh, people shouldn't be traveling as such right now because of the cases of insecurity all around the country. Let me quickly take the map tip story. Mm -hmm. So the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking of Persons has said that a lot of Nigerians have been trafficked to, through Turkey into 
the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, that mm -hmm. um, Cyprus is not a legally recognized country, and there are no relationship with the general community apart from Turkey. The challenge now is that many Nigerians go there in the thinking that they are going for education, but they are forced into prostitution, locked into apartments, documents seized, and it is they are being trafficked. Um, they have their main th the main thing, the main economy of Cyprus is around education and tourism, and Nigerians being trafficked constitute seventy percent. Young Nigerians thinking they are going into university in northern Cyprus are now being trafficked. So NAPTIP is giving this warning so that many through their spokesperson. Um, Mrs. Stella Nezan, <laughs> in a statement, is advising young Nigerians to be aware that these people promising you education in universities in Northern Cyprus tend to make them prostitutes or mm. even um, they're just trafficked. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we move on to our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back.